Ready? All right. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Now, those three lines may seem uh, not true and pretty obviously lies. But though that is the motto of a dystopian country in the book 1984. 1984 was written by George Orwell in the year 1949. It's a book about a bad, uh, horrible dystopian future. The government wants to control everything you do and control your thought, perhaps even punish you for it. I wanted to read this book to really see, I've always heard about it, I've always heard about 1984 and references to it, so when I read it, I was pretty amazed. I'm going to read an excerpt about the life of the main character, whose name was Winston Smith, as he was returning home. This is from the beginning. It was a bright cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. Winston Smith, his chin nuzzled into his breast in an effort to escape the vile wind slipped quickly through the glass doors of Victory Mansions, though not quickly enough to prevent a swirl of gritty dust from entering along with them. The hallway smelt of boiled cabbage and old rag mats. At one end of it, a colored poster too large for indoor display had been tacked to the wall. It, is, it depicted simply an enormous face, more than a meter wide, the voice of a man of about 45, with a heavy black mustache and ruggedly handsome features. Winston made for the stairs. It was no use trying to lift. Even at the best of times, it was seldom working, and at present the electric current was cut off during daylight hours. The flight was seven flights up, and Winston, who was 39 and aging, went slowly, resting several times on the way. On each landing, the op opposite the lift shaft, the poster with the enormous face gazed from the wall. It was one of those pictures which are so contrived that, you're, that the eyes follow you about when you move. Big Brother is watching you, the caption beneath it ran. Inside the flat, a fruity voice was reading out a list of figures which had something to do with the production of pig iron. The voice came from an oblong metal plaque, like a dulled mirror which formed part of the surface of the right-hand wall. Winston turned a switch, and the voice sank somewhat, though the words... Uh, the words on the telescreen were never, ever turned off. He moved over to the window, a smallish frail figure, the meagerness of his body, merely emphasized by the blue overalls, which were the uniform of the party. His hair was very fair, his face naturally sanguine, his skin roughened by a coarse soap and blunt razor blades and the colds of winter that had just ended. Outside, even, though the shut, even through the shut window pane, the world looked cold. Down in the street, little eddies of wind were whirling where whirling dust and torn paper into spirals, and though the sun was shining in the sky a harsh blue, there seemed to be no color in anything. The black mustachioed face gazed down from every commanding corner. There was one of the there was one on the house front immediately opposite, posters everywhere that said, Big Brother is watching you. The dark eyes of the picture looked deeply into Winston's own. I hope that we never reach that point in our society where the government is watching us every single second. Thank you.